Oh, boy. So that being said, everybody, it is time. It is time for our next guest. Right now, coming live, 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 it is the man himself. This man is famous all around. His web series is called The Nostalgia Critic. Of course, he is the Nostalgia Critic. Done great Scotch comedy. Channel awesome. He helped ran that. That's his channel. He also, of course, the that guy with the glasses dot com. You can find him on Twitter at the nostalgia nostalgia critic as well. The man himself, Doug Walker. Welcome, brother, to Under the Mat Radio. Hey, thanks so much, man. Thanks for having me. Hey, what's hey, going on, man? Hey, man. Nothing much, man. You hear me? Okay. Yeah, you yeah, hear me. You hear it fine. Yeah, I can hear you fine, man. Okay, well, was, right, was, was that was that intro good enough for you? <laughs> well, I mean, you know, if you could throw in a few highnesses or my lord or anything like that, but yeah, I guess it'll do. It'll do. Yeah. <laughs> go, 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 you can do that. You can do that. Well, he said uh, the highnesses, the, the my lords. Um, what, what's what's the other the other ones you said? Uh, God works. Uh, you know, because Doug so backwards is God. The only thing missing is you. So you make it happen. You need to call me it, and it will be so. Oh, okay. yeah, so, yeah. so all, all right. <laughs> he's, he's, that's right. I'm one of the guests. <laughs> <laughs> it is um definitely will say this. It is a pleasure to have you on the show. Now we gotta ask you as we always do tradition here. What do you want us to call you, Doug, Doug Walker, Mister Walker, Mister Nostalgia Critic? What do you want us to call you? No, I thought you God. God works. No, I just call me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it is Doug. You say thanks. I know you're a very busy man. Thank you for coming on. I know we spoke off air. I'm definitely glad to have you on. Um, your other compadre and uh, business partner, Barry Jones, was on our show about a few weeks back. Cinema Snob, uh, definitely was great to have him on as well. Um, a lot of people have been asking this off air uh, leading up. A lot of people saw you, a fan sent this to me that, I said, hey, uh, the Nostalgia Critic was did a midnight screen- screening with Brad Jones. So, starting off, uh, let us know how they went uh, doing the midnight screen- screenings with uh, Brad. So, I mean, it took hours of press, as you can tell. We had to get the microphones on, the lighting. Uh, that whole car is a set. Uh, a lot of people don't know that. But, um, no, it was something where we were in town doing a uh, filming a crossover. We did uh, The Passion of the Christ, uh, which is something we both wanted to do for a while. And uh, while we were in town, uh, you know, he had to catch up on all these movies and said, you want to see one? And he said, yeah, man, maybe Goosebumps, because I heard a lot of people talking about that. And, uh, uh, yeah, what they were talking about wasn't what I was talking about. But, um, yeah, no, it's definitely a lot of fun. You can just Okay. Wow. And just, game boy? Just, just how bad was Goosebumps? You know, it, here's the thing. I don't know if it was intentionally bad or not. It's one of those I can't figure out because it has every kid movie 90s cliche you can imagine. But Goosebumps is from the 90s. So I don't know if it, if it was intentionally throwing in all these really corny forced tropes. Um but, I mean, it, if it was, I kind of give it credit, but there was never, like, a wink to the audience, like, hey, we know what we're doing. Like, even with the Expendables, like, you kind of knew Stallone was satirizing his own stuff while playing it very seriously. This one, I wasn't sure. So, I never liked those cliches, so it wasn't for me, but uh, uh, the gnomes were funny. <laughs> <laughs> I remember well, that, too. I will, uh, I will say, shout, shout out to my daughter, Kayla, 14. Her, her friends went to go see Goosebumps. You know, it's for kids. The kids loved it. A lot of kids love Goosebumps. You know, certain movies are made for certain audiences. But from what I heard, Doug, Goosebumps was better than the Fantastic Four movie that just came out. So if you can, let us know how horrible Fantastic Four was to you, Doug. <laughs> you know, I don't know if uh, 
Uh, I guess I should see at some point. Actually, the one I really want to see right now is uh, the Gem and the Holograms movie because A, I gotta know how bad it is. I gotta know how much it misses the source material. And B, I just found out one of my friends is the guy who does the guy who does like the guitar guy in Mad Max and the I Love Christmas song and everything. It turns out he's in it, and I didn't know that. He was like, "Yeah, I kind of wanted to wait for you to see it before I told you." I'm like, "Oh my god!" So. Now I almost feel like I have to do a review of this movie because I know the guy and we have to do like some sort of cameo with him. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, yeah, fan question. Since you mentioned Jim and the Holograms and Sergeant Critic, what about the Ghostbusters movie that's coming out with all women? Um, how do I put this? The idea of doing another Ghostbusters movie in any way, shape, or form seems really stupid, but if you're going to do it, at least do something different with it. And this at least seems a little different. You know, they're getting a different director on board and different cast. And I'd, I'd much rather see that than everybody in their, you know, their wheelchairs, you know. <laughs> 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 I mean, we saw how great that worked for Indiana Jones. So um, it, it's, it's just not something I need to see. So if they're going to do it, I'm glad they're doing something different, but I have no idea. Um, you know, I, re- I thought The Heat was one of the funniest movies you ever saw. Yeah. Uh, that cracked me up. Yeah. But, like, Brian Blades and Spy, I thought were only okay. So uh, I'm kind of in the air about it. You know, I- I'll just have to wait and see. Okay. Um, my question to you, real quick, is, is that with Michael Bay doing a lot of the cartoons, he did the Transformers movie, which, to me, they were trash. Um, he did the, the Turtle remake, which was also trash. Um, a lot of the, uh, the 80s and 90s cartoons that's becoming movies have really been bad. Um, but are there any ones that you've seen that you might think kind of slipped through the cracks and, and could have came out as a gem, something like more one of your favorites? You know, and uh, you know, maybe something that I didn't see or I missed. Is you all the, the uh, critic? I I want to admit the Turtles movie was not as bad as I thought it would be. It's still not good, but it, it, I think everyone thought it was going to be a lot worse. Um, I don't. Top of my head, I mean, one that currently out of existence. I'm sorry. Say it again. You said the one. You mean one that's out right now, not like one that I wish they would make? Yeah, I'm talking about, well, my my first question was the ones that's out right now. My next question is, is the ones they will make. But since you already asked that, I can go ahead and, and put that with the rest of the question then. So, yes, the ones that's out now and whatever um ones that you want to see. I mean, one that I did, it, it's a guilty pleasure, to say the least, but I do actually like the very first transformer it's just it almost felt like a satire of a michael bay movie and i thought it was fun and i could see the action okay so i'm like and that one i didn't mind too much even though again i know it's bad i know it's stupid uh mm-hmm. the other ones are fun um but no one i would love to see uh i don't know if i must bay or whatever but i'd love to see a thundercast movie i think you can get really creative with that and have a lot of fun and uh, there's so much imagination in that world and cool technology and great visuals i think you can really have fun with that hmm. now, now if they were to do that would you want it to be costume or do you want it to be cg-ish like they did with the turtles you know all super broly looking you know turtle or something would you want them to look like you know Lino, I guess, be more like a cat looking like from the, a jungle than the person, and I guess Cheetar is more like, you know, CG-ish, or do you want it, you think costumes might be a lot better? I, if, you're gonna, you? if you're going to do CG, you have to make the whole thing CG. I think if people are just getting so sick of looking at stuff in a real world that's not there. But if it's all CG, it's fine. It's all an illusion, so you can believe it more. But with the effects they do in, like, the Transformers and the Turtles and stuff like that, they're not got awful, but you know they're not there. And that's just, when you're watching an action film with real people, you want to feel like you're really in there and part of the fun. Um, so, and I think you can do some fun makeup with that. I mean, you don't really know what part of them are furry or not or whatever. I mean, I always thought they were, it was mostly just, 
skin. I mean, because they have hair. I just kind of assumed that was like the perfect or whatever. Um, so it, I prefer actual makeup, especially as this new Star Wars movie coming out with all the practical effects and the, and the makeup and stuff like that, like, and how good that looks. I mean, you can still do great stuff with that. So I, I love to see a lot of action uh, Thundercats where they use actual, like, really good makeup on them. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. Um, Tech, back to you, man. I guess yeah, thank you up for a bit. Uh, yeah, oh, sorry, there go ahead and take go ahead and take over. I'm screening these calls. Go ahead. Oh, okay. All right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, Tove. Yeah, Tove, how you doing? Welcome. <laughs> this is uh, uh I'm, I'm doing good. I'm doing good, man. I'm just canceling some New York Mets fans. You know, you know how that goes. So. Oh, oh, uh, say no more. Say no more. Uh, yeah. You have any questions? Uh, please feel free. Oh, I don't have any questions, but I, what I would like to say is uh, I just want to send a shout out to you. The first video I saw of yours was, uh, I think you did a video called, uh, it was like 11 good things the Star Wars prequels did or something like that. That was how I discovered you. And then I checked out some of your other stuff. And uh, as a Star Wars fan, I really hate this bandwagon of, oh, the prequels suck. So you actually made some good points in the, in the video. So thank you for not joining the whole, oh, let's ignore the prequels kind of thing. That's cool. <laughs> oh, no, thank you so much, man. Yeah, that uh, that video cut surprisingly well. And I sort of, I mean, I'm not a fan of those movies, but I think it's still good to acknowledge when good stuff is done. And there are good things in them. I think it's silly just to ignore them. Uh, so, yeah, no, thanks so much, man. Cool, cool. Thanks, yeah. Tove, thanks. Um, my next question to you is, we just had Halloween just passed. I know we, we talked about goosebumps real quick and everything. Um, share with us one of a horror movie that you probably seen this year that really, uh, probably, I guess, caught your attention, caught your eye, and also share with us a, a horror movie that is a, a fan favorite. Um, you know, one that, that's, that's near and dear to your heart. One that's really, I'll say two that are really near and dear to me, uh, that I watch every Halloween. I always watch the original Haunting. Uh, the black and white Ooh, version. The I, black and white one. Yeah, it, it, it's phenomenal. The, the remake is awful. I, I did a uh, review of it, and I just ripped it to shred. It's one of the most therapeutic reviews I ever did because I hate it so much. And the original is such a brilliant film. Even if you don't find it scary, it's just a brilliant movie. And every time I see it, I, I find new stuff. And then kind of on the uh, opposite end of the spectrum, uh, probably even since you. I really love because I love the atmosphere. I love how goofy it is. I love how constantly funny it is. And, uh, yeah, it, it just cracks me up. So, yeah, those, those are probably the two I put on every year, and it just it feels like Halloween when I put those on. Um, and in, terms, in terms of a movie that came out this year or just any recent scary movie? Uh, well, let's, let's, my let's, let's shoot for this year. Um, I know we get we have of course like uh the the visit the gallows um the the green I think the green inferno um it, it's been a couple ones out here this year as far as horror movies any uh one of those that that really stood out to you or um really caught your eye so the fans can know um any one of those you know one and I can't believe I'm saying this I actually will kind of recommend the visit the Shyamalan movie. Uh, not because it's exceptionally good or anything, because there is, it's still clearly a Shyamalan film. Everybody still talks weird and the writing's odd and stuff. But uh, it's the first movie I've ever seen where I was both laughing and terrified at the exact same time. And I've always wanted that feeling in a movie and I've never gotten it. And the last third of this movie, the entire last third, is both really suspenseful and hilarious. So I'm both sort of laughing and screaming at the same time. And it's just, it's a real blast. It's a lot of fun. Uh, and I rarely see that in a movie that can combine those two so beautifully. So, uh, yeah, like I said, it's still weird and it's still awkward. So I can see someone not liking it. But just in that last third and the build-up to the last third, I, I think it's worth it. I have to agree with you. I, I've actually seen the movie uh, recently. And I, I know the I know the twist that you're talking about. Uh, I'm not going to reveal no spoilers, but I will admit that that was something I did not expect. I'm not a big uh, Shadowline fan of his his work, 
um, besides like the sixth sense, which was what, 15, 20 years ago. But, um, <laughs> you know, I, I will admit that that's that part that you're mentioning. It, it was very, very creepy. And at the same time, it was kind of funny because it's like, wow, you know, wow. Like, <laughs> I did not expect that. And um, I think that he, he really did a, a very good job of, of you know, kind of keeping that part um, under wraps. But um, now with movies and stuff, when, you, when you're when you going in there and a lot of times we, we as uh, movie fans, you know, we, we go, we look, we like it, we probably like this scene, we probably hate that scene and stuff. You go in there with an entirely different insight, with an entirely different view. Um, what are some of the things that you mostly uh, – I say displeased or, or, or really gets under your skin in movies nowadays. Uh, everybody running the 3D, everything's so cliche or something. What what are some of the things then that you go into movies and that it really just really just gets under your skin and you really get tired of it? Well, you know, the funny thing is a lot of the stuff that I hated the most uh, was more kind of like maybe eight years ago. We kind of wrote it through like, a, a little through the 90s and mostly through the early 2000s where we just had this formula and these plots and these stories that we felt we had to stick to for some reason. Honestly, movies nowadays, I'm not going to act like they're all masterpieces or anything, but they're they're kind of taking more chances in terms of how to tell the story. I mean, we're retelling a ton. We're doing comic book movies and reboots everywhere, uh, which kind of sucks. But the good news is that the way they're doing it is very different. And where, I mean, we just did a review of Hocus Pocus, and that is a keen, essential 90s cliché. I mean, it's every cliché you can imagine. It has the new kid moving into a neighborhood. It has the bullies. It has him trying to fit in. It has the one-liners. And, you know, you see this stuff all the time, and it just gets so boring and so redundant so that I guess I still get upset when I see those kind of clichés. Like I said, I didn't like Goosebumps very much. Um, but... I so rarely see those cliches anymore, and it seems more like good is kind of the new good. <laughs> you know, we're not yeah. making it more, and I think maybe the internet played a big part in that because fans could just react so quickly and tell people what to see and what not to see. Uh, you know, and, and Twitter and all that stuff, they could so quickly say, hey, this is not good, you've seen it a million times, skip it. And within the opening weekend, it can go from a hit to a bomb. So I think we have to try harder. Uh, because of that. So, yeah, I don't know. Just any cliche that's like over 20 years old, <laughs> if it felt like it's from the 90s, I'd kind of roll my eyes and go, really? Really? So, yeah. and that's one thing jumping to my head. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Tech, you, you're back with us. Yes, I am. I'm back. Apologize, guys. All right. I wanted to mention, um, so our team wanted to mention something to you, uh, Doug. Yes, Doug. How you doing, my friend? I'm like, Long time fan of yours, and I wanted to say we honor you on our show to name this show. So I remember, so you don't have to. So you know, it's many movies we tried not to remember. <laughs> yeah. There's many films I try not to remember. Uh, but was, what was that the question? Well, which ones do I wish I no? Could remember? This, is, this is just an honor to you for the show while we named the show after you. Yeah, the the, ti- the title of our show, is, the title of our episode is called I Remember It So You Don't Have To. So we did that in honor of you since she was coming on to the show tonight. Oh, awesome. Thanks so much, man. Yes. And, <laughs> what we, and what we mention a lot is a phrase we started saying, movies that didn't, that never happened, which is movies that we just act like never existed. Or in your case, Doug, we say movies that you try not to remember. So with that being said, um, let us know the movies that you purposely try not to remember ever existed. A movie I try to not remember, try to forget ever existed. Um, uh, I mean, there, but when I took canon a little more seriously, I, I got so pissed off at Batman and Robin. But now with all the other Batman films and all the reboots, you know, I've lightened up a bit. But it's still so hard to see some of those actors from the first movie in Batman and Robin, like there's Michael Goss and Pat Hingle just acting like morons, and it's like, oh, that that hurts. Um, 
Worst, worst movie I ever saw in my life was uh, Garbage Pail Kids. I mean, that is just the most painful, ugly piece. Wow. Uh, you know, if I could forget that one, that'd probably be good. Mm. Wow. So, shout out to our friend, uh, Chris uh, the teacher, who is uh, one of the owners of uh, Figures Toy um, uh, Figures Toy Company. Famous company that sells a lot of action figures and toys, and um, he had a little beef with you, Doug, because he personally messaged me and hit me up and said, "Yes, you had a nostalgia critic. I love that movie, but Doug hates it." They know which movie was? Uh, garbage Pile Kids. Yes, it's one of no, his favorites, no. and you hate it. I I, I would be. So, I would love to talk to that person. I mean, not to, like, convince him or anything. I would just be so curious, you know, what there is to like about that movie. I mean, to me, that's just the definition of an ugly film, an ugly, hate-filled, violent, despicable film. So I'm I'm really curious what the, the he would like about it because I really don't believe that everybody has to like or dislike something. I mean, everyone's attached to their own opinions and I'm hearing different opinions, uh, so I'd be really curious what to keep on that. <laughs> we, we, we definitely, uh, I will contact him, and then, of course, off the air, I'll contact you once I can get y'all back on the show. I definitely, when we have you on for the sequel, uh, Nostalgia Critic uh, sequel, I definitely have you um, talk to him about that. Um, mm-hmm. Movies we act like never happened. The NFC game where you can start off, you know, we it's a bunch of them we can name out just to give Doug a few. Uh, well, it's, uh, I, how long? How long is the show again? Okay. Um, well, <laughs> my my first pick will be the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles three, the Turtles in Time movie that came out in the nineties. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That never happened. Yeah. Um, no, that was, Wolf yeah, Creek. Was the movie Wolf Creek. Yeah, that never happened. Um, the Strangers, the uh, the newer one, Strangers, number one that I felt like never happened, and the Gallows of this year. Yes, where I actually threw my popcorn at. The movie was Trizash. Very, very upset. I paid money for that. I usually get to pay for me. Can I throw one more in there? Can I throw one more in there? Oh, no. oh sure, please, please, well, well definitely. Uh, because I was talking about it earlier, and it's. <laughs> Again, I was trying to think of one that still gets my blood boiling, and uh, the, the remake of The Haunting, because I hate now that I have to say The Haunting, the original, the black and white, because a lot of people think of that <laughs> terrible movie. <laughs> it's the biggest sodomy to a film. So, yeah, I'll say that one. That is a legitimate, I wish that didn't exist. Hey, hey, oh, yeah. hey, there's a lot of movies we mentioned. RoboCop 3 is one of mine. The movie never happened at all. Um, mm-hmm. Die Hard was it Die Hard five, six, seven, eight? How many other ones never happened? The, the latest Die Hard. The latest Die Hard, yeah. horrible. Vanilla Sky with Tom Cruise. That's <laughs> 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 you know the ending really did never happen. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> that is true. Um, uh, a movie I recently watched. Uh, shout out to Brad Jones, the cinema snub. Um, knock knock with Keanu Reeves. Oh my gosh, that, that movie literally made my eyes hurt. Just wait, okay, did you, you did you have you seen John Wick? No, I. Uh, yeah, that's the Keanu Reeves one, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I, good, good. I heard that movie was good. Is, good movie. Is it? It is. It's good. Yeah. They, they're doing the sequel. Everyone says it was, it was pretty good. Yes, it is. And it, exactly. they're currently working on a sequel. By the way, basically, take when you watch, um, uh, when you watch John Wick, and I recommend you do take Keanu Reeves the same look, same beard, same hairstyle, same walk, same dialogue, and just put him in the knock knock house, and that's what you get. See women come in that clearly. Basically, this guy caught in the rain, needed shelter, and they end up torturing him in his house. Oh, fun. Which, a part of the movie, he this, now he's in his house because his family went away for vacation. So, if you're in your house and there's two strangers and you tell them verbatim these words, I'm going to my car. If you don't come out my house in 10 minutes, 
them going to get upset? Why are you leaving your house? He left his house to get in his car to wait for two strangers to get dressed in his room that he didn't know and gave him a time limit. Yeah, I never even heard of those movies. Oh, yeah, that's oh, probably worse. Oh, it gets worse. Um, round of shout out, um, Angry Mark said a labyrinth with David Bowie is a movie that never happened. Uh <laughs> the the Chuckster mentioned I Robot is one. And uh we got some other ones. Street Fighter Street Fighter Legend of the Chug League, <laughs> Mortal Kombat Two, uh Dennis the Menace Two, Home Alone, Three, Four and Five. We getting a bunch of random <laughs> shout outs. <laughs> <laughs> Doug for those. But yes, Doug, watch, watch, uh, watch John Wick, which is a good movie, and then watch Knock Knock. And if you can, watch them back to back. So it's like Keanu Reeves left the John Wick set and went straight into the house of Knock Knock. Well, I, I promise I'll watch, uh, I'll do the first half of that, the John Wick part, <laughs> at least. Yes, do that. Um, other fan questions now. The switch, uh, the switch top is another one by Chuck. The Tekken, the Tekken movie and King of Fighters, bad movies. A lot of fans, Doug, are, are back and forth with the Channel Awesome website, and I, I know Channel Awesome um, was a great website, and then people start disappearing, and people went on to do other things. So, Doug, if you can explain to us how Channel Awesome got started, and why so much the the back and forth with uh, guests um, on that channel. I mean, the uh, it really started, like, I just started doing the videos as, like, a hobby. Uh, you know, I think it turned out, like, one a month, something like that, uh, and just putting them on YouTube. And then uh, a guy named Mike Mashad came along and uh, said he was putting together this new media company, and uh, he thought that my videos were getting a lot of views and there was great talent here, and uh, he could pretty much put a website together and at a time where nobody was getting paid for this, uh, he said that he, he could turn it into a full-time living for me. So I was like, oh, well, okay, if you if you want to try it, let, let's go ahead. And uh, he came through and made this giant, uh, you know, this website. And it was also his idea to bring in a ton of other, like, talent and producers and stuff like that and sure. really turn it into a community, um, which is really, really cool. And that way we can do, like, anniversary specials and crossovers and, uh, you know, just all sorts of, there's just a lot more opportunity with a lot more people that is, that it's just one person the whole time. Uh, so yeah, I mean, he's the one that really turned it into, you know, just a guy, you know, yelling in front of his wall into like creating this community and his audience, uh, to go along with it. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm so grateful, man, because yeah, I'm literally allowed to do, what I want for a living and say whatever I want. And in entertainment, that's extremely rare. So, uh, yeah, it, it's still, it's still going great. And, and, uh, you know, we're back on YouTube again as well. And it's just going phenomenal. And, uh, like I said, I couldn't be happier with it. Thanks for that. Um, Anderson Game Boy. Well, I want to ask you, um, we talking about a lot of different uh, movies that that were good and that were bad. Um, I want to ask you: Is there a movie that I wouldn't say necessarily good or bad, but one that's just kind of emotional? Probably one you saw with you, like maybe your child or with your parents or with your your girlfriend or, or you know something. A movie that you know you probably just would people will be shocked that you really enjoy or you know it stands out to you and, and if you do have this movie can you tell us why uh this particular movie uh stands out um so much um i'm trying to think like an emotional you know i guess one that uh i think there's a lot of films that i can get a as a one that a lot of people can of see and then scratch their head and go huh okay you know they don't like it or dislike it but i think it's just a friggin' masterpiece is uh, Where the Wild Things Are, the movie version of that. Uh, I thought that was a complete, yeah, I thought that was a completely original, truthful look at how a child works through things without knowing all the details. It wasn't, you know, with, with 
Wizard of Oz, and it, I love Wizard of Oz too, but with Wizard of Oz, you know what every character represents. You know who they're supposed to be. Where with a real child's mind, the way they work through things, they don't necessarily be like, you know, oh, this woman I don't like, she's a witch, and this guy I kind of like, you know, he's a cowardly lion. It, you know, they don't do that. They work through their problems by having sort of these abstract, pretend fairy tales in their own head. And uh, I, I thought it was brilliant. I thought it was really phenomenal. It took me a while to figure out what it was doing as well, which I liked. But when I finally sort of caught on, I'm like, oh my god, this is this is like a genius film. And uh, in many respects, I think it's just so moving and so incredible. And so, because you mentioned it, Doug, I will. It's like you 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 watch John Wick for us on the Man Radio. I definitely will watch Where the Wild Things Are for you. I've never watched it, but I did hear good things about it. So I yeah. Yeah. I definitely want to see John Wick. I'll, I'll give you the heads up right now with where the wild things are. It's probably not at all what you're going to expect it to be. It wasn't what I expected. I don't think it's what most people expected. But if you really just sort of like sit when sort of attention to what it is, it's, uh, it's a really inspired film. Hmm. Hmm. All right, on that. Maybe. Can I mention to you? With with the nostalgia critic, now we know that if we're right, you took a time off. You air quote retired. Of course, we also a pro wrestling show. Of course, in wrestling, whenever a pro wrestler say I'm going to retire, they never do. They always come back like for like five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten runs. You at one point, Doug, took time off as a nostalgia critic. You left, you know, took a hiatus, and then you came back. So, can you talk to us what made you take time off and what eventually led you to come back? You know, we did the comedy video was called uh, "The Review Must Go On," and that was one where, when we did that, we kind of wanted to be as truthful and honest as possible, even though it's still technically fiction. Um, but it, it's kind of what was in there, where I wanted to try something new. Uh, we wanted to try demo reel, which was an idea we had even before Nostalgia Critic, and uh, you know, we tried it, and it wasn't catching on with the numbers and such, and then. I really saw the movie Beyond Life of Timothy Green, and I thought it was so beautifully horrible that it started to give me these new ideas and sort of spark these new ways I could do nostalgia crack episodes where it doesn't always have to be just a guy in front of a wall screaming. It could actually be creatively satisfying, and you could go different ways of doing a review, and it doesn't have to be spoon fed to you and stuff. So it's one of those things where just that one stupid little film suddenly got the energy going, and it really was kind of a second wind. So when we did the comeback episode, we wanted to make it clear it wasn't just because this other show wasn't working, though it did help, <laughs> but it was the thing where there really was this sort of second rush happening. And I think you can tell because the newer episodes are uh, a very different style from the original, and uh, I think they're really much better for it. Well, what would you say is the most frustrating, the most difficult part when doing the Nostalgia Critic videos. Of course, we've all been big fans of you since you started. Shout out to our community creator, community creator, the Chuckster. He's, um, he's the person that got me into you a couple years ago. Um, what's the most frustrating part of doing the videos? You know, my, my favorite part is also the part that gets me the most angry if anything goes wrong, and that's the, uh, that's the editing. Um, the editing is by far like where you see it working, you're getting the timing down, you're finding out if this is going to turn out as well as you thought it is, or as well as you thought it would be. And if it doesn't, you can fix it, you can edit it, you can cut things out and you can play around with it. But the downside is that A, it is time consuming and B, with the amount of stuff that I do now with effects and shots and layers and green screen and such, and with, you know, just consumer grade editing programs, you know, which are good, but for what I need to do, you know, they just keep burning out, you know, and shutting down and stuff. There's only so much a computer can take. And we, it, it, it's a pretty, you know, upscale computer. I mean, you know, we have tons of backup drives and hard drives and stuff like that and, and lots of space, but, uh, yeah, it's still it's still a monster for the program to take. So, and I'm not very patient with it because I really get in a mode when I start editing, 
And if even the tiniest thing, like, glitches up or something doesn't save, even if it's, like, a few minutes, I get so pissed off. <laughs> so, yeah, um, like me. I yeah, it's yeah, I always I can do people okay. It's things I can't deal with things very well. That's where you know if a computer just shuts off, you know, out of nowhere, it's I, I can't reason with it. I can't talk with it. I can't you know discuss reason with it. it. It just it shuts off, and that's the way it is. And there's for me, there's nothing more infuriating. So um, yeah, it's that's both my favorite and my least favorite part, I suppose. Hmm. With that being said, Doug, we're going to bring in one of our other business affiliates. We're going to bring in Live 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 right now. Back to the show, Angry Mark. Welcome. You're here live with the Nostalgia Critic, Doug Walker. Man, I can't be too angry with this guy, though. No, you can't. Uh, <laughs> I, I can't be too angry with this guy. He does great work. I only oh, think I can take it. I mean, seriously, you did great work. I just, I want to know why you feel that porn doesn't get more awards, like best picture and best sound. <laughs> I mean, definitely why? best sound. Oh, I, I just, want, I just want to be sure I heard that right. Did I hear why porn doesn't get more yes. awards? I, I'm gonna take a wild guess and say there are awards for it. <laughs> 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 I'll be honest, I've brushed up on these awards, but uh, I'm sure they're out there. I, I'd be kind of shocked if they were. It's a pretty big profession, and Lord knows there's a lot of people who are good at it, so I assume they would give out some kind of award for it. Well, that's good to hear, because I know you're an expert on movies, and the next time I do a good film, never mind, my wife would get pissed about that. Um, but, uh, but, no, you... Man, millions of YouTube views. I mean, it, it, it's amazing. Like I said, I'm having a hard time being angry, and a, usually a lot pisses me off. But your work <laughs> is—you you do great work. Uh, thank you. And uh, if I can use that amount of views I'm getting and direct them to porn awards, I will do my best because, by God, they deserve the acknowledgement. Well, hey, I, I might have to. You know, if you ever get into giving awards for amateur, let me know. I am the man. <laughs> I will um, hear what you said. Yes, I will do that. But yeah, I, yeah, I mean, two guys here, though, under the mat radio, right these guys are amazing. They always have great guests on. Um, you know, like I said, I can't, can't be angry because you do awesome work. There's a lot of things I'm angry about, but you know, when it comes to film, you know, a lot of a lot of things are taking me off. Um, but can I ask your opinion on an upcoming production? Sure. What are your thoughts about Fast Eight them casting Paul Walker's brother into the movie? Uh, you know, I've only seen a couple of the Fast and Furious movies, and they're fun. They're fine. I'm going to take a wild guess and say their strength is not their story. Uh, it's more the stunts and the action and stuff like that. that. That's not all to say, like, you don't want to see those people in there. You do. And, of course, his passing is, is very sad and very tragic. Um, but at the same time, it's like, yeah, you you got to do something. Um, and I, I don't know if his brother's been in a lot of stuff or can act or whatever. So um, I don't know. I think, like anything, I just got to wait and see it. But, again, in a franchise that does not seem especially heavy on the character or story. It seems much more on, you know, excuses to have some really cool stunts going on, but they're done well. And, you know, and the stories aren't necessarily insulting or the characters insulting. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll give it a chance. Okay. And one other question for you. If the movies mm -hmm. were head to head coming out the same year, who wins for best female in a leading role? Sandra Bullock for the blind side or Halle Berry for Monster's Ball? Uh, you know, I never did see The Blind Side. From what I hear, I probably shouldn't. Uh, and I'm usually not a fan of Bullock's serious stuff, even though I know she can act. She just doesn't do that much for me. And Which is ironic, because I really like her as a person. Everything I hear about her is amazing. 
Halle Berry, everything I hear about her is not very good usually, but she was really good at Monsters Ball. So I, I guess on the acting, I'd probably say Monsters. Although I never did see Blindside. I should see Blindside, so I shouldn't talk. Yeah, one thing that's amazing about Sandra Bullock is how her production company has just taken off. I mean, yeah, she's good stuff. She, she's, she's been amazing. She's done over uh, a little bit over uh, for herself now six hundred million dollars with oh, her wow. production company. You know, everything I hear about her is really cool, like, like the actual person. Like, she does all this really great charity work, and she's actually, like, you know, really social and really kind and stuff like that. And uh, I, I got to the point where I, I, I don't know, it seemed like every role she did was, like, kind of Miss Congeniality, you know, ish. So I kind of stayed away for a while. But then I saw her in the heat, and she was legitimately funny. And not like, oh, hey, here's someone trying to be funny and pulling it off okay. Like, she was really legitimately funny, and that kind of restored faith in her. Like, and so now I'm kind of like, okay, now I'm actually, you know, I, I want to see what she's up to now. Now I'm kind of interested again. And, and hearing that she has a production company, too. Yeah. But that's, what is your favorite genre of current movies coming out? What What is it that you want to watch when, when you hear? Is it are you a horror? Are you action? Are you sci-fi? Are you drama, comedy? If, if somebody's going to give you $20 to go to the movies for yourself, what are you going to watch? Man, it, it's, I love them all so much, it's hard to choose. Um, I guess I can say the rarest that I see really done well is probably horror. Um, and not even that there's not good horror movies out there. There are, but I mean legitimately scary films. I think I can count on my one hand how many films actually like legitimately scared me. So uh, so that's something, if I heard a film is actually really scary and really gets under your skin and stays with you after you see it, uh, that's something I would get excited about. Anything trying something really new, I get excited for, even if it's in a, a franchise or a genre that's been done to death. If they're doing something really new and innovative with it, uh, I get excited about that. Well, a little, a little quick background on Mr. Angry Mark here. Uh, I was involved in the original production of Paranormal Activity. Oh, really? No kidding. Yes. Yeah. Well, what you do on it? Uh, I was at location management. And people laugh because it was just a, They say, well, that was just done at one house. <laughs> one you know? house. And uh, so we go in, and then I get assigned to go ahead and start doing placement for all the props. And that took literally less than $1,500 in prop money. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it was... And when the film got sold for pennies, there went our residuals. So I'm definitely angry about that. <laughs> I did not get deferred points. Hey, you know, um, it doesn't feel any better. Uh, it's definitely much better than Ghost I mentioned, and I get the feeling people will be talking about the film you worked on much more than the latest one that came out. So uh, yeah. at least you get that. Amen. Very, very true. They do. Well, I want to turn this back over to Tech and Game Boy. I'm going to mute myself out. I want to keep listening to you. Uh, you know, make sure. Uh, what is your uh, website to everybody out out here in a uh, radio podcast land? You know where they can check you out. Give me some info. Let's tell the people. You need to plug. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's channelawesome dot com uh, is where you can find like all my stuff, and we're also starting to upload our stuff to YouTube again. I mean, we've been uploading for a while, but yeah, we're starting to get our backlog on them as well. All right. Well. Hey, check Game Boy. I'm gonna mute myself real quick, and you let me know. And uh, because I got some angry shit I gotta talk about when I'm done. Oh, all right. about so no angry. <laughs> yeah, that, that, so that, that's angry, Mark. Uh, Doug. Uh, quite a random question for me to you, Doug. Is everybody up goes on YouTube? Now, there's a website called Daily Motion, which a lot of people try to forget about. Um, very site similar to YouTube. Have you ever thought about uploading your videos on Daily Motion or other platforms such as like Hulu or have you ever thought about that? 
Yeah, after Blip shut down, there's a couple that we've been playing around with and we're in talks with and stuff like that. So it's one of those where right now we're kind of, we're just trying a few different ones out. But, uh, you know, YouTube, like anything new is going to be on YouTube. So, I mean, that that stuff will always be there. Like I said, it's one of the reasons we're also putting the huge backlog on YouTube as well. Um, You know, now, of course, the problem is they do get claimed a lot and you constantly have to fight them, but... Um, but the, the newer stuff, for the most part, is getting by okay. And even a lot of the older stuff is getting by okay. So, like I said, we're sort of uh, playing around, seeing which one outside of YouTube, you know, we kind of want to call our home. But, uh, yeah, as of now, we're still in an experimental phase. <clears throat> yeah, so YouTube has uh, been good to us, too. Definitely has. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, first time I ever dug a Sandy Ryan... Uh, from Baltimore, it's kind of reverse. Ask you, nostalgia critic, if you have a question for us here under the Man Radio, you want to ask us. The, a question I want to ask you guys? Yeah, just had a fan. Yeah, uh, yeah Ryan different. from Maryland. Yeah, that's different. <laughs> he said, Do you have a question <laughs> you want to ask us? Thank you, Ryan. Yeah, thank <laughs> you. Thank you, Ryan. Good question. Um, uh, what was the funniest thing that Brad Jones said in the interview that you did with him? Oh, God. Um, what was the NFC game, boy? When he was, uh, when he, when he was get when he was talking and getting on Keanu, he was getting on Keanu Reeves, the Knock Knock movie. And he was, uh, what was he talking about NFC game, boy? It was some, something about, something about movies. There's a movie he saw. Well, he, he, he said it, it was it was supposed to be based off of, um what's his name? Oh, what's his name? Urin Bowl. What? Uri Bowl. Is it Uri yeah. Bowl? Yeah. Yeah. He's talking Uri about Bowl how awful his movies is. Yeah, is even him or um the other guy, the other um director who's like really really bad at movies. Oh, that's like, you don't what say, it was. We don't. Uh, <laughs> he he was funniest thing Brad told us on our interview was his very much dislike for Eli Roth. There we go. Yeah, yeah. I forgot. And, I couldn't think of his name. Ooh, yeah, he hey, him. Yeah, he cannot say <laughs> yeah. him. So, yeah, yeah that was pretty that's funny. funny. Eli Roth movies. Everybody has trigger words. You mentioned Eli Roth the bread, and then it's like he goes on, kind of like how I am with uh, uh, um, Michael Bay movies. Not not a big fan of Michael Bay movies. Random the explosions. Trigger word, I guess. <laughs> What'd you say? There's trigger words and there's trigger names, I guess. Speaking of, what yeah, is trigger words and trigger names for you, Doug? A, a trigger name for me? Uh, oh, let me see. Uh, I guess, the, I mean, I don't know these people personally. This is more just if I see them in a movie. Uh, Kevin Costner, uh, Matthew Broderick, sometimes even Russell Crowe. These are all people that just annoy the shit out of me. <laughs> so sometimes Russell Crowe is good. <laughs> Uh, I, got, I, got. I, I still I think Ferris Bueller is the only movie I can take him in. I can't take him in any other movie. And then Kevin Costner, I've yet to see a good performance out of him. So I don't know. <laughs> there could be very nice people in real life. I just don't like their acting. Hmm. Well, with some uh, trigger people for us, uh, Ryan Gosling, Gosling, he's more like his face never moves in movies. Like, can you smile? Drive. What was that other movie in the game where he was in? Ron Gosling. Like he, he's emotionless. Like he's like a wax figure. I'm gonna say, hold up now. He was good in Nightcrawler. No, no, that's a Jake Gyllenhaal. Oh, that's Jake Gyllenhaal. Oh, damn. I got yeah, Ryan Gosling. Yeah, I, I'm, the then guy. I don't know. I don't know who Ryan Gosling is. That's uh, so funny. Too confused all the time too. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, who? <laughs> like, uh, what's he you know getting? Like about? that's the other guy. Ooh, then I don't know who he is. Then. Sorry, not familiar yeah, with his Yeah, you know word. who that is? Ryan Gosling? Yeah. Uh, do I know? <laughs> yeah, I know I'm always confusing for doing all, though. That's the thing. So I'm always yeah, thinking, like, okay, oh, that's probably. <laughs> 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 oh, my goodness. It's like when, when I was a kid, I used to confuse Nick Nolte and Gary Busey because uh, they kind of looked alike back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I, I have I have two questions I want to ask real quick because I know we're getting short on time. Tech. Let me slide in and ask these questions. My, my first question to you is: 
who is an actor and an actress that you think is well deserved an Academy Award? My first question. And my second question is, what is your all-time favorite Disney movie? And what is the Disney movie that you hate the most? Um, let's see. Okay, in terms of Oscar, I mean, it's like, God, there's... I forget who won what. See, that's the thing. I can think of these great performances, but I forget who won them. Uh, I mean, Gregory Peck for Kill a Mockingbird. If he didn't get an Oscar for that, I'd be shocked. Um... And, uh, God, in terms of actress, I'm tr- again, I'm trying to think of ones that have actually won awards, um, like an Academy Award. Uh, uh, yeah, da, 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 da. You know, she didn't win it, but I'll, I'll throw it out there anyway. Uh, again, Julie Harris in The Haunting. Like I said, I think that's because we just watched it again, but it, it's a brilliant performance. It's so uncomfortable, uh, and it's so good. Um, in terms of a Disney film, uh, favorite Disney film is Fantasia. That, that's my absolute favorite. Um, I, in fact, they're re-releasing that uh, this weekend. I'm going to see if I can check that out. And uh, okay. least favorite? Uh, does it have to be animated or can it be live action? No, I'm going to say animated. I'm Because there's, uh, there's a couple of live action that's really, really bad. We're going to stick to animation. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, it, it's a toss-up between, uh, I was going to say Aristocats, but that's harmless. It's a harmless movie, so I can't be mad at that. It's a toss-up between Home on the Range, which is just a total waste of animation and time, and Chicken Little, which I think is a phenomenally (laughs) skilled movie. (laughs) Chicken Little. Oh, you know what? I haven't seen that movie recently. It was was different. I didn't even know it was Disney now. I think about it. I thought it was DreamWorks. Yeah, I it, it's one of those where, like it, it's one of those where like it's not only not funny, but it's just so incredibly mean and hurtful. <laughs> and I'm just like, this just seems like a despicable film, and it's not funny. Like I could forgive it if it's funny, but it wasn't even funny. <laughs> so yeah, that was, that was pretty bad. Okay, okay, thank you. When, thank when you the, before we let Doug go, I want to give random shout outs to other crappy Disney movies. Uh, Disney movies, um, uh, the Pocahontas two. Lion King 2, um, other of sequels. The live action Jungle Book movie, horrible. Ugh. Movies that yeah, Disney uh, just, uh, it. What was that, Doug? Oh, uh, yeah, I never saw it. A lot of the Disney sequels I just assumed were bad, so I didn't see them. But uh, there's one or two that some people are saying, no, this is actually good. So maybe I'll no. check them out. We always just want the Disney Summers is uh, going through the Disney sequels and seeing if there's any good ones in there. Well, you, you got to check out, I'm saying this sarcastically, the new Jungle Book animated movie called Jungle Book How with the Moon. It's getting real. Slap <laughs> <laughs> you not, Doug. <laughs> it's on DVD, Jungle Book How with the Moon. Uh, I will do my best to find that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody listening, send, send it to Star Trek Critic. A copy of Jungle Book How with the Moon. <laughs> <laughs> so, with that being said, Doug, it's been an honor and privilege. Hopefully, we can have you back for the sequel. Have you back on the Absolutely. show. Um, I know we mentioned off-air, Doug, uh, real quick, plug-in. Um, you mentioned you're going to be filming soon. Uh, I think you filmed back in October. Now, you want to talk to us a little about that? So, about the uh, uh, review? Yes. Yeah, well, actually, it just came out today. <laughs> okay, it's good. Of, uh, it's, it's a focus oh, focus. Last, how it's the last nostalgia ween uh, that we did. We just had to have it go into November to get three reviews out. But yeah, that's one that's been requested for a while, and uh, I always avoided it because I didn't know the best way to go about it or how to talk about it. But uh, yeah, we finally found a way, and it's uh, it's definitely pretty funny. I look amazing in it. We definitely will check it out. We, we will we will post it on our on our group page and <clears throat> um, share the link for you. Um, it's been an honor to Doug to have you on. Thank you so much. Um, we you, definitely man. will be talking off air, um, and we'll be working on the sequel to have you back on. All right, sounds good, man. Thank you so much for having me. No problem. Thank, Thank you, man. You. We had a good time, man. You take care. You. you too. Thank take you. care. All right. Bye bye. Everybody, that was Doug Walker, the man himself, otherwise known as the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it, so you don't have to. Death is uh, great. 
catchphrase that begins every webisode with. Um, great guys. We talked off air. Definitely was a surprise. Definitely was a. We was honored that he looked forward to being on the show. Definitely heard about our show through his other friends. Uh, shout out to Brad Jones, the cinema snob. Howard Rutnick from Screen Junkies. Please check them out as well. And Honest Trailers and Honest, Honest Game Trailers. So, um, NFC Game Boy saw a team real quick. Thoughts on Doug Walker? Oh, um, I love the Nostalgia Critic uh, uh, shows. Um, check out the episodes and stuff a long time ago. Great guy, enjoyed it, everything. Um, <laughs> it was good to see and, and actually hear some of his favorites and, and some of the things <laughs> that uh, he liked and disliked. And um, I will say on a side note, please check out the movie The Visit. Actually really interesting. Um, definitely probably one of the shockers that I, I didn't see coming up this year. That's salting. Oh, it was an honor to have him on. It, it was fun to hear him talk about with us about his movies. He didn't like movies that he did like. And another thing, and it's what was interesting, is we forgot what movie we did Venture Tales, Surf Digits. That was the movie I always wanted to ask about. What do you think about that that movie? Because I don't know if he reviewed that yet. And do y'all know if he reviewed that yet? I don't know. Like uh, Doug's had so many videos. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and also we we gotta get one more we gotta get two more guys. That's what I mentioned. We gotta get we gotta get Angry Video Gang Nerd and we gotta get the um on the other uh, oh my gosh. There's so many of them out, we gotta get more. It's so funny. We, we will. No worry, we, we, yeah, we will. We will. Yeah. Uh, I want to give another quick birthday shout out to a fan of the show named Ash Swain to her daughter who um birthday is this week. So we want to give y'all to um wish you a happy birthday to uh, Ash Swain's daughter. Give a shout out. Definitely got to show love to our fans and under the Mad Radio. And with that being said, to end it, we'll make this announcement official with the name debut on Thursday. This Thursday, 7 p.m. Eastern time. Will be wrestling black and white. It will be Tech, myself, and Angry Mark, who is now on live. We got one minute left. Go ahead, Angry Mark, and end it over for Angry Ism. Well, guys, you know what? I only believe in one thing. You know, go to bed angry. And let me just tell you a couple topics we're going to talk about this week on pro wrestling in black and white that makes me angry as shit. I am so tired of independent wrestling promoters who don't know shit on what they're doing holding title belts. All right? Just because you own a promotion does not make you a champion. It makes you a mark. And another thing I'm getting the shits of are these independent wrestlers who are drawing crowds and the promoters still expect them to sell tickets that on their show? Oh, that makes me angry as shit. So on that note, gentlemen, I want everybody to go to bed angry, wake up angry, and live it angry. There you go. Mm. So I'll take real quick, go ahead. So I'll take you right. 20 seconds. Okay. Okay, so I'll take you right. Why the fuck Ross Matter and uh, Tom Bloke was in Surf Ninja? That's why I want to know. What the fuck, man? Really? That was random. I was like, what? What the fuck is he in that movie? I was like, the movie don't even make sense already, so you going to have motor surf and all these words we use in this. What was Leslie Nixon playing? Some like, guy named Mr. Nightfish? I don't know. Like, what the hell was that movie about anyway? a good question. This is what I want to bring out. <laughs> Random shout out to you, Bloodsport T. If you have not seen it good, that is also a horrible movie. Just stick to the original Bloodsport with John claude Van Damme. Don't forget Under the Mat Radio coming up next Tuesday, Live, Live, Live. We will have Zane from Wrestling with Regret. Check him out. Great YouTube series about wrestling and pop culture. We also will have Formerly from TMZ, wrestling columnist, wrestling enthusiast, Nate Satan will be joining us. Don't forget also this Thursday, 7 p.m. Eastern Time, we'll be wrestling in black and white with Tech and Angry Mark. Probably have a couple of guests. Check us out in the C Game Boy. I just want to say uh, happy birthday and rest in peace to Afrocentric Queen, whose brother, rest in easy. 
you didn't get a chance to say it, so the boy gonna say it for you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, happy birthday to you, my dude. Yeah, Talk happy you. birthday. Uh, shout out to you, thank you. To a community created the Chuckster. Shout out to you, Saltine, Ever since you Queen Tech, mm. NFC Game Boy, LSR, and everyone else. We will talk to you Thursday, 7 p.m. Eastern. I'm out of here. Gotta go. Bye. 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 <laughs> <laughs>